Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry. Today's focus will be on an anterior tooth. We're going to remove a tooth, place an implant, and then place an immediate temporary using the patient's tooth. Always take some photos before you do this because you want to see what's going on with the area. For example, if we see a retractive view and you can see how well this patient retracts, this usually makes me a little bit nervous, but you can see the long papilla. And these long papilla, we want to preserve them. So the patient has a very pleasing smile and a very good lateral shot. You can see a nice profile. But when we look at her smile line, we can see that we have to do a little bit extra in these cases. Is this case actually has long, thin papilla, a little bit of a triangular style tooth. If you look at the problem, she was in a sporting accident and cracked her front central. And we can see that it's up really quite high below the zone of attachment. So this tooth is going to need to be extracted. We did do our due diligence, sent her to endodontics and had it evaluated, but they said there just wasn't anything we could do in this case except uh, bridge or place an implant. So the smile line is quite pleasing, but we do have to be careful in this case. If we look at the retractive view a little closer, we can see that this tooth has some interesting coloring, some halo effects, some type of transitional uh, mamelons. So we have to be a little careful when we're making our temporary as well. This is kind of interesting. You see a nice zone of attachment with the junctional epithelium and connective tissue. If we look at this from a different angle, what you can see is that this is really sealed off the area, but this fracture is above this area, which means that over time this is going to abscess and have problems. So we have a look at the end of the tooth or where the tooth fractured. You can see this is a kind of a oblique type of fracture into the pulp. And uh, so this part of the tooth came out quite easy, but you can see that the, the root is a bit more challenging. So what I like to do in these cases is to stay away from the buccal plate. So I'll use a Shea 2 millimeter tool from Salvin.com. Get behind the tooth because I'm going to be removing a little bit of bone in that area anyway. And then I'm able to get the tooth out fairly easily. So you kind of laterally displace it and then get that tip out. Our goal when we're replacing this tooth is to make something very similar. that's going to let the area heal very quickly. So we do want to go into the lingual wall. We want to stay away from the buccal plate and then there's going to be a jump gap as shown with a black arrow. So I place the um, implant to be three millimeters below the free gingival margin as you can see on the, the line on the driver. This will indicate where the implant should stop to give ideal space considerations. So the implant's placed, we can see the internal connection, the hex, the conical seal, the platform shift, and notice the bone on the lingual. It's actually rebounding over the lingual area. So this is an area that we're going to have to come back and trim to make sure that this area is going to be uh, doing well when we place the prosthetics because this can impede the prosthetics from seating if we're not clearing this area out. So we take the diagram and place the temporary crown on. You can see the lingual bone that I'm talking about. This has to be cleared and uh, done at the time of surgery because it's too difficult later on. The reason why we have to do this is the Nobel Procera scanner is going to make a ring, the red ring that's showing here. This red ring is for strength issues underneath the tissues. And so when we're making a zirconia type of crown, we want to make sure that this area is kind of letting the uh, materials be thick enough. So it goes up at a, a certain height. So what I like to do is to place a surgical cover screw which protects the complete top of the implant. So when it's on top of the implant and you drill, you can't get to the implant because it kind of seals it over like a lid on a jar. Once the cover screw is on, you can take a uh, diamond and start to cut the lingual bone back. And you need to think about what that shape of that red ring is. So we get that cleared out of the way and this is going to enable the new crown to seat three months from now because the buckle is going to have a jump gap the the distal and mesial are going to be kind of cleared out anyway so we generally have to just remove in the lingual area I decided on this case that it's the perfect case to use the patient's natural tooth as a temporary we get good coloring good shading we actually had a high fracture 
So I cleaned it all out, did some acid etching, then I'm using a cylinder here to kind of bond this tooth back in place. So once I'm doing this, the cylinder is then picked up out of the mouth. So you can see here, the cylinder actually goes through quite nicely through the lingual aspect. As long as you have the implant placed in an ideal screw retained position, this will work. If you're anything buckled, then it's going to come out the incisal edge and it won't work. So we get a, a kind of a beautiful temporary that's going to enable the tissues to be exactly what we want them to be during healing. It's important to keep the Unigrip driver seated into the screw during this procedure of bonding a tooth to the cylinder. But the cylinder itself actually, once we have it out of the mouth, we take some flowable resin, bond it from the cylinder down to the tooth, and then create the emergence profile that we want. Once this is done, then I start to go towards bone grafting. So what I like to do is to place a healing abutment for a bridge. Now why do I use a bridge healing abutment? Because it's going to go to the outside of the implant, meaning that when I put the bone graft in, the bone grafting is not going to be covering over where I want to put my new temporary. So it's going to kind of line up the bone on the outside of the implant, and then I can come back and place my temporary very easy. With this case, I used some allograft, and placed this in the buckle jump gap and around the implant, then used a bone spoon to kind of shape it and push it up around the implant to make sure that the buckle bone doesn't collapse. I'll take the temporary and I'll always put it in chlorhexidine just because I'm passing it into an open wound and I want this to be as clean as possible when it goes in and is seated because this is important to the healing. We take off the healing abutment which has actually gone to the outside of the platform meaning that there's a nice channel now that we're going to go inside to the platform so using the platform shift so that the bone graft actually goes in and makes a nice seal and then the temporary goes around this which also seals the soft tissue so we're getting an early type of healing and response because what happens is that the zone of attachment is still looking for somewhere to heal so it's going to try to heal against this uh, new tooth and new temporary so by getting in there doing minimum amount of preparation to the tissues minimum amount of healing minimum amount of everything we're able to replace this and get this so that the body is really liking it this tip is from my Canadian friend Yvonne Fortin he says to roll a little bit of ferment into a rice shape on the back of your glove and you can carry it to the mouth and this will make it so it's easy to go down the access channel so once you place your cord you can go back in and place this little piece of ferment to seal the area off so bacteria can't go down there. So wow, after about an hour procedure, tooth is out, root is out, we're able to get a nice temporary that looks exactly like what she had when she came in. So the patient is thrilled. She realizes that the uh, gingiva and the gums around the area are going to be a little red for a few days. But then watch this, when she comes back after about two months of healing, look at the bone here. The bone is staying up around the top of the implant. It's kind of over the platform shift. And this is what we're seeing. If the body has a chance to heal and heal with very minimal trauma, and then the body does a really wonderful job. It fixes itself and makes it so it's going to be just like it was before. So the amazing thing about this implant is the high stability and insertion allows us to get the ability to temporize this pretty much 98% of the time. And then we're able to get the body to do the work, get the tooth where it needs to go, get the body to do the work so it makes it so it's going to be a really beautiful result. And look at this. The soft tissues are actually lower than they were to start with. And that's very cool because I can take this tissue and push it up at the time of putting the crown on. So that's pretty amazing. So this implant to me is a high performance type of implant. Just like a high performance car, you, you have to know what you're doing with it. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry.